Before I start with the aftermath video, I want to give an explanation as to why I haven't been so consistent with uploading over the last few days, and also to give an apology for that. Um, I've just been very, 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 very busy over the last couple of days. I've been working a hell of a lot. I've been working day shifts. Um, on Sunday, when the game against Aston Villa was, I... Had to get up early, run an errand in the morning, came home to watch the first half and then had to shoot off to work for six hours. Came home from work, had to go out to a family dinner and didn't get in until around nine o'clock at night, my local time. So because of that, I didn't get to watch the second half of this game, but I saw the highlights of it. I saw the score and obviously I was very impressed and happy with the win, but uh, I'm only doing this right now. And getting the video uploaded onto Monday because I've had a lot of other things going on and I just haven't found the time to do YouTube. Hopefully, I'm able to try and allocate some more time to doing the channel. But obviously, I, I'm always very busy outside of YouTube. But I do make ends meet somehow regardless. So I just want to give a quick apology and I hope I can be forgiven. It has finished. West Ham United 2, Aston Villa 1, a.k.a. The contestants for the Team GB diving team won at the London Stadium. And given the amount of times Aston Villa went to ground, it was like that 420, Mom, get the camera out. Oh, baby, a triple thing, you know, with those sniper rifles, Doritos, uh, what, what's it called? Um, MLG phase stupid memes that are on YouTube. That's exactly with the sniper, like, pew, pew, that. That's exactly how it was every single time Villa got the ball or had the ball taken off and they just dived. See, you can take Grealish away from Villa, but you can't take the diving out of Villa. They still dive all around and they deserve to lose that base on that alone. West Ham completely controlled that game from the start, completely dominated. Everyone was good defensively, everyone was... Good mid in the midfield, it just took a little bit of time to kick into gear. And this game had some very special moments in it. I think we've seen special moment of the season in this game. And from what I saw and all the reactions on social media, it really was a special day for one certain West Ham player. And I'm going to talk about that in this Aftermath video. As per usual, I start off with the team lineups. For West Ham, no Nikola Vlasic, who I would have loved to have started this game, but wasn't to be. Ben Rama started, however, and I think that this was only fair because he played very well after he came on in the game against Sevilla. Uh, I do think he is a special player still, Ben Rama. He's got a lot of doubters on him. There was quite an agenda against him, but look, the guy can ball. And I mean that. Yarmolenko was back in the team as well. His compassionate leave has finished and he's back training with the first team. He made the bench. And this game was dedicated to being united with Ukraine. There were fans with Ukrainian flags and Yarmolenko received a lot of respect from his teammates and fans alike. In that first half, Ben Rama had a really good chance early on. He struck one on target and had one off target as well a few moments later. Fornals um, was wide with his chance, but Antonio and Johnson showed support. And how I saw it was that Johnson was working that right side of the field as kind of like a wing back more than he was a right back. He was receiving the ball either from Rice or Lanzini, cutting in onto that right side and then crossing it. And it worked well for about two or three crosses, but it wasn't too long before Villa sussed that out. And they started to close down that right side. Luca Dean got hurt. He had to come off and on came the veteran Ashley Young. And as the first opening 20 minutes came to a close, the game was actually quite even. Both teams had similar kind of traits of each other. Both were playing long striding runs from midfield. Both had quite a solid game defensively. And Villa's defence has been hard to break down. As I mentioned in my preview, they kept three clean sheets in a row. Wasn't going to be easy at all. Suchek headed wide, but still, the attacking flow that West Ham had in the game was good. 
we have that attacking flow and that attacking presence, but we don't have the niche to shoot first time. Sometimes shooting first time is better than trying to just pass it into the net or score a simple goal. Shoot and take the chance. You may have more chance of scoring than you would tapping it about. We tried to catch Villa off guard a lot, and a lot of Villa players kept going to the ground so easily. I could not believe it in that first half. Every single time. There are about four players that went down supposedly injured. But mind you, it was okay because the Villa traders were getting their money's worth and were getting a little cardio exercise from it. So, you know, you get a burn off a few calories while treating injured players. I suppose that was the perk of it. Maybe that was the reason why. Who knows? <laughs> but Villa just kept on diving and diving and diving. Seriously, get your snorkel out and go and swim in the Great Barrier Reef, you know, and go and catch Nemo or something, you lot. Seriously, you man just need to go and, ca uh, and catch Nemo. Go diving off of some board or something. Seriously, just fall into the ground. It's pathetic and ridiculous. And maybe it's because, oh, you know what I think it could be? Because they've got Slippy G as manager, ain't it? And, you know, he's... Probably got flashbacks and nightmares from that. They're probably just remind, doing it to remind him of what could have been, you know. And Gerard slipped and bars away. That one. Where he says, no mistakes, no mistakes, no mistakes, no mistakes. Like, just no mistakes in this game. And then end up slipping. Not once, but twice in one year. Is that where the Villa players have learned how to die from? Just, that's a very plausible theory. Just saying. Villa's defending was good, though. I have to give them credit for that. And we just need to get the breakthrough. It was nil-nil, half-time. Johnson was on the same side as an unconfident four nails. As much as Johnson was actually having a good first half, it wasn't good having unconfident four nails there because they weren't going to work well off of each other. I have to say. Um, not a good mix there. And that was one major talking point for me. But still... Quite an even game, but we just needed to take those chances. And I've said it time after time, just take the chances. And you can't go wrong if you do that. In the second half, Antonio went down a few times and seemed to have a hamstring tweak. Which is exactly what we don't want going into Thursday night. Yeah. That's why you sign a striker, isn't it? I'm glad we signed that striker. And he managed to come off the bear. What? So, sorry? Yeah, don't remind me we didn't sign a striker. All right. I don't... That's just West Ham pain. Seriously. No, we didn't sign a striker in January, so we didn't have anybody. But, but, Andrzej Yarmolenko got ready to come on and got a warm round of applause. Now, even though Yarmolenko hasn't been West Ham's best player over the last couple of seasons, I've never, ever once booed him when he's come on as a substitute because I don't want to do that. It's not nice. Really, just give the guy support, and he really needs our love, support, and affection right now because he's a human being, and his country is going through one of the most torrid times. Yarmolenko's just come back from Poland, where he had to retrieve his wife and son who had fled Ukraine. He's had an emotional few weeks, and I don't think he's over it mentally and emotionally. So every support will help him. Uh, Lanzini also struggled to get a shot away. And I don't know what it is, Lanzini. He's getting into the box. He's getting these clear-cut chances. He's either teeing it off or he's scuffing it. He tried to tee it off to a player who wasn't even behind him. Just shoot, man. Shoot. How many times do I have to say it? Shoot. You know, what do you put garbage down? Shoot. What does um, Elmer Fudd do? Shoot. What should Lanzini do? Shoot. What else do you... Th what can I say to you, man? Cresswell then went down and had to come off. So Fredericks came on for Cresswell. Danny Ings had a really good chance that Fabianski made save of the game with this. Fabianski, at last minute, managed to scuff the ball to stop it from going over the line. And it was class save. Fabianski had a blinder of a game, man. Blinder of a game. Um, West Ham had a corner. Zuma forced Martinez into a fantastic save. And it's probably going to be save of the month. And then Dawson headed it over. I don't know how Dawson missed, but Zuma really tested the goalkeeper. 
Villa made a substitution. Danny Ings came off and on came Leon Bailey, who's become a little bit of a forgotten man at Villa because he's been injured and hasn't played enough times. I still think he's a good winger, but he's not getting the game time. Dawson made a long pass to Ben Rama. And let's just talk about this. Dawson would be a quality centre-back rather than a good left-back if he worked on his passing game. But that pass to Ben Rama, delightful. He controlled it, controlled it, considered his options and, and then played a lovely through ball into Andre Armalenko, who was in the box. He fired with his left foot, scored. Quite a trademark Yarmolenko finish, really, because he's, he's known for scoring from those tight angles after he controls it in the box. And it's his first goal, coincidentally, since he scored against Aston Villa on the last day of the 1920 season. Seems like scoring against Villa then. And the whole stadium erupted when Yarmolenko scored. He immediately dropped to the ground and put his hands on his face like that and seemed to cry while his teammates hugged him. Emotional day for him. And football's about moments like that. Things are more important than football. And the emotion that came over Yarmolenko after he scored that goal, he didn't just do that for himself and his teammates. He did it for the 40 million plus Ukrainians who are suffering right now. And he poked it into the net. Just an emotional moment for him. He was overcome with joy, happiness and pride. Douglas Luiz, the main diving culprit, came off and on came Emiliano Buendia. Bailey shot straight at Fabianski. Soon before you knew it, 2-0 to West Ham. Declan Iniesta, mate. Declan Iniesta. Excellent run to cut open Villa. Ben Rama got the ball, played it first time to Fornals, who's running into the box. Momentum's gaining on the ball, blasts it in 2 0. And Fornals needed that goal. He needed that finish to shut up some of his critics as well. And all these players that were, who were getting criticised this season have been able to prove it by scoring goals and, and changing the script. So, fair play to them. He needed that one. Ben Rama also, two assists. Don't write my Algerian wizard off, okay? Diop replaced him. And you know what Diop, that means when Diop comes on? It means we're just trying to defend a lead. Uh, Phil got a late consolation through Jacob Ramsey. Honestly, Fabianski could have tried to save that, but I didn't really care. Page two on to West Ham. The main talking point, Andre Armalenko, who deserved that goal. We're all here with him and we're here to support him. I made a video on this channel saying not to get on his back for now. And I'm glad to see that the fans haven't. Because he's a human being, like I say. He, I know I slagged him off for his performance against Kidderminster. It was one of the worst I've ever seen at that time. But since then, he's been through a lot. And for some people, football and sports can act as a distraction from negativity. While this is not the case with Andrei Yarmolenko, he's still able to feel the love and the warmth from the West Ham fans. I think he's done himself, his country and his family proud by scoring and he was overcome with tears and just emotion at full time. And I'm, I'm just so happy for him. Really, I am. And I'm happy for Ben Rama. I'm happy for Fornals. But Andrei Armalenko deserved to take the plaudits. Nobody else is going to get the amount of praise and the amount of respect that he did because of his country's situation and how much scoring meant to him. Good to have you back on the score sheet, Armo. And it's good to have you back in the team. Thank you very much for watching this episode of The Aftermath. If you liked the video, hit the like button and don't forget to sub for more content. Take care, everyone. And I'll see you all soon.